right, welcome parents. This is going to be our virtual college information night since we're all at our homes. Uh, this is an overview of your role in the college admissions process, and we're going to we're going to hit all the grades here with some brief information. And attached to this email will also be some handouts with to-do lists and checklists of uh, all the important stuff that needs to be completed prior to uh, applying to college. Okay, we're going to go over sophomore, junior, senior, and then we'll have some Q&A time where you can email your counselor if you have any questions. So for 10th grade, first thing you need to do, and you need to make sure you do, is to meet with your high school counselor often. So any freshman parents, make sure your sons come in and visit with their counselor on a regular basis starting next year. Should have been doing it this year, um, but we want to make sure that we make those connections and we have those meetings. Students are also going to take the PSAT and MSQT as a 10th grader in the fall of their 10th grade year. We're going to have that in October. Um, it'll be a Wednesday in October, usually the second week of October, and the students will complete that test in school on a, on a designated testing day. The last one says, are you interested in attending a U.S. military academy? And if you are, uh, the 10th grade year is when you start those pre-candidate questionnaires and you start doing your research for West Point, for the uh, Naval Academy, for the U.S. Air Force Academy, um, because that process starts there. And then junior year, you get into some more um, military uh, decisions that have to be made. You have to get a uh, recommendation from a congressman uh, or woman, and uh, that, that's a whole nomination process. So it, it starts in 10th grade year. So the thing you need to do is you need to have discussions and start having discussions with your family um, about finances. Uh, 10th grade is when that really needs to start. College planning and financial planning really needs to, to begin even before 10th grade year. Um, but you need to have some real, uh, real conversations and discussions uh, about how you're going to pay for college and uh, the type of college you're going to be applying to, private school versus public universities. Um, the cost is different. Sometimes the private schools offer more aid, more um, grant money, and that's stuff that you can take advantage of. But um, you need to take a look at that. And the U.S. Department of Education's Funding Your Education page has a lot of information about the federal aid programs, has information about student loans, uh, what a subsidized and unsubsidized loan is, which we'll get into later. But they have all that information at your fingertips online, and it's a great resource. Make sure you're attending those college fairs and the college visits at De La Salle. Every fall, we have at least 40 colleges come through our doors. You need to take advantage of that, and you need to be visiting with those colleges as early as, not, as 10th grade, uh, even 9th grade. We had some, some students uh, attend those visits, and they were great opportunities for the kids. Make sure you're getting involved. Part of your college um, application is going to be basically a resume of your activities and your uh, your volunteer work and uh, the extracurricular stuff that you're doing outside of the classroom. So you need to make sure you're um, a part of that and you're making that a part of your life as early as ninth grade. But we're going to focus on 10th grade now. If possible, take advantage of vacation and other family travel time to visit colleges. So get out, get out there and visit colleges. I know with the COVID um, colleges are closed now, so you're not going to be able to do any of those visits here this spring uh, and, and probably not this summer, you know, just because everything is, is kind of still, I believe, going to be locked down. We haven't heard any word from the colleges about opening up for summer classes yet. Um, I just know that through the end of this month when college was going to be ending, uh, they have closed everything down and, and everything is, is shut down. So you might want to reach out to the colleges here in the summer, see if they're open, uh, if you feel like venturing out. If not, take some college visits in the fall. Take some college visits next spring, um, but get out there and check out those colleges. Grade. So starting with 11th grade year, uh, you've got to make your list of abilities. Do a little, um, like I said, I, I like when kids do a resume. So make a list of your abilities, your social uh, preferences and personal qualities. That's a list of schools you're looking for that fit your those those uh, uh, the criteria. But you want to make a list of, of your activities, your involvement and uh, the, the, your grade uh, achievements. Uh, put that all on paper, start working that out, so you can, it'll, it'll, it'll just help you with your college admissions um, applications once you get into senior year. And then, like I said, again, I can't stress it enough, attend those college visits at De La Salle. Um, I, we had almost 50 last year, and um, we have the, the, those admissions reps coming into our school all the time. Um, they come in the spring as well, 
on, on uh, if they can't make it in the fall. So throughout the course of the year, there's at least 50 schools that are visiting our campus where you don't even have to leave the building. You just need to show up to the presentation or show up to the table in the comments and have a conversation with the admissions rep. Um, we do that for you guys. Visit the counseling office. We are a resource check. We have information. We're here for that information. We're here to provide that information to you. So please visit with your counselors. Make sure you're having those conversations about colleges. Make sure you're discussing with them um, what your what your thoughts are on, on the schools and asking those questions. And you're also, um, juniors are going to take the PSAT and MSQT again in the fall of their 11th grade year. They do that in October, and that is when it counts. The PSAT and MSQT counts for National Merit uh, Scholarship consideration. So how well you do on the test your junior year could 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 result in um, National Merit Scholarship dollars for you in the future. So it's worth uh, taking taking it seriously and being a part of that. Be organized. Make a file. Manage your college stuff. Manage your testing, your application data. Write down the due date. Start to gather material for a portfolio if you're in uh, in the arts, right? If you're a visual arts major, if you're planning on doing that in college, you'll need to have a, a, a portfolio of your material, your work that you need to provide to the university. So you want to start setting that up now and start getting that in order as early as the uh, beginning of your 11th grade year. You need to sign up um, by by the, the second part of uh, junior year. You want to sign up to take the SAT or ACT. Uh, you want to make sure you do that before you leave for senior year or for, for uh, summer vacation between senior year and junior year. And um, make sure that you have uh, a proper score that you think is good enough. With that said, this year is a different year. COVID-19 has kind of screwed everything up as far as SAT and ACT testing. And as a result, just about every school is going to uh, is going to um, uh, test optional, which means that they're not considering the test in the admissions decision because a lot of students didn't have the opportunity to take the test before the admissions uh, season began. So you're going to have an opportunity to just focus more on the grade point average and more on your students coursework when it comes to uh, the application. Um, but generally down there, a, a score of an 1130 or higher on the SAT or a 23 ACT is, is usually a solid score and good for, for a number of schools. Um, your more selective schools, your Michigans, your Northwesterns, those are going to require, uh, those are going to have more, um, you know, require a higher ACT or SAT score to get in. Um, but, but, you know, anything in the mid to upper 20s is a solid number for ACT. Continue to take those college visits in 11th grade and continue to research your options with your parents and your counselor. We, we uh, want you to opt into college board opportunity scholarships when you're doing the PSAT and MSQT. Um, it offers um, you the opportunity to earn scholarship dollars um, based on your performance on those tests. And College Board is a great resource. You can visit collegeboard.org and you can take a look at those scholarships. They have a whole scholarship page. Um, there are other resources that are great that we uh, recommend. Fastweb.com is a scholarship search site, and raise.me is a micro scholarship site where students can input their grades from freshman year all the way through the, the first semester of senior year and earn micro scholarships for their hard work. And the, scholar, the colleges honor those, that, those dollars, and they'll award them those dollars um, or merit-based aid, whichever one is higher. Spring, summer of 11th grade, you want to develop a list of your colleges that you're interested in. And I said 15 to 20. I, that's a bit high. Um, generally, you're not going to apply to more than five, but uh, take a look at colleges and do your research is what we're asking you to do. Take a look at the schools and make sure that you're checking everything out. And the um, again, spring, summer of your 11th grade year, you're going to want to take the ACT or SAT. However, this year is a bit different. But if you're a 10th grade parent, watching this little uh, presentation. Um, next year, you will have the opportunity as an 11th, uh, the student will have an opportunity as an 11th grader to take the test next spring, and that's when they should. So um, they want to make sure they have a, a test ready to go and a valid test score before they move on to um, to, 11, uh, to to senior year and the application time.
you want to start gathering your information for financial aid. So the FAFSA, uh, which opens up on October 1 each year of your senior year, um, you're going to want to do that. And the information that they use would be for the prior tax year. So students that filled out the FAFSA this year, um, it was their 20, 2018 tax information that was counting toward the um, um, their, their financial aid and FAFSA decision. So it's a year prior, a full year prior um, to it when they would um, would submit their, their tax information. So um, you, tax information will all be done. Just make sure you have it ready. Make sure you have it ready for when you get into um, the beginning of fall senior year that you, you can do that. And what, what's good about the FAFSA is it's a federal government website and you can do a FAFSA um, data retrieval tool where it takes your information directly from the U.S. Treasury Department and your tax return and it put, inputs it right on the form for you. So that's important. The next thing you need to do is uh, if you're a D2 or D1 prospective student athlete, you need to register with the NCAA Eligibility Center. And you can get there by visiting that ncaaclearinghouse.net. And if you're not playing D1 or D2 sports, but D3 NCAA, you don't need to do this. Um, but if it's an NAIA school, uh, some of your smaller D3 NAIA schools, you need to um, join the NAIA Eligibility Center just to determine eligibility for college. And we'll help you through that process. Just contact your counselor if you're having any trouble with that. Back to the financial aid and the FAFSA stuff that you're gonna to need to know for senior year. Um, part of that process is before you can fill out your FAFSA, you need to get a username and password, which is known as your FSA ID. And you can visit that. Uh, you can just search for uh, the FSA ID and FAFSA online, and it'll direct you right to it. And it's government websites. If you go to um, FAFSA.com, that's a that's a no-no. That is a not a government site. That is a site that will charge you to fill out the FAFSA. It's kind of a trap. Go to FAFSA.gov or FAFSA.ed.gov. Uh, make sure it's a government website before you uh, start filling anything out. But again, you don't do this until 12th grade. You don't do this till the fall of your 12th grade year. We're just getting you prepared. And then if you have an opportunity, if the colleges open up over the summer, take a visit and, uh, and get on campus and check it out. Moving on to the next. Create a resume. Make sure you create a resume. Um, like I said earlier, write down your extracurricular activities, your academic accomplishments, any honors and awards you've received. And then also discuss your future plans and major. This will help you because you're going to need a resume in, in college when you're applying to internships and things like that. It just gives you a head start and it helps make that college application uh, a little bit easier to fill out when you have it all on your fingertips. So I encourage everybody to write a resume, develop a resume, and, and get that ready um, before senior year. So if you're a junior parent watching this, uh, make sure your student is, is working on something like this uh, during this downtime when he's uh, all caught up on his online work and, and also during the summer, I think it's a good thing to, to get going on. And before you leave with uh, for summer break, colleges require letters of recommendation from teachers. So you want to ask your teachers now before you go away to, to for the summer and before we're completely done for the year and everybody logs off, make sure you give them a heads up and ask them if they'd be willing to write a recommendation for you. Because uh, when we get back in the fall, Teachers are going to have dozens of students um, asking them to do this, and we want to make sure that you uh, give them an advance notice, and if they want to take some time over the summer to write it, they can do so. Now we're on to 12th grade. So when you become a senior and you're in your 12th grade year, uh, there's a quite a few important steps that you need to take. The thing that I think is important is being organized. Make, make a master calendar, save your deadlines, make sure you understand application due dates, and deadlines for financial aid for our state and any materials you need for your application, such as letters of recommendation and transcripts and a portfolio. Make sure you have all that information documented. Make sure you have it um, easily accessible and make sure that you complete that work and get it done on time. The registration deadlines are important and you're not going to be able to apply past the registration deadline. They're, they're not as, as forgiving. So make sure you don't miss a deadline. Um, take the ACT one more time or SAT one more time if you choose to. And uh, 
the SAT practice is on Khan Academy. If you go to your PSAT and check out your PSAT scores and you go to the uh, official College Board site, you can do a customized free online Khan Academy training to help prepare you and improve your scores from what you did on the PSAT. So I would take advantage of that. It's there for you for free. No cost at all and no tutoring uh, payment that you have to make. So I think it's important. It's something you can do from your phone. So take advantage of that. And the one thing you need to do when you apply, once you apply, we're going to get into the application part, but you have to make sure that you send your official ACT or SAT scores to the colleges you plan to attend. You have to send it directly from the, co uh, the college board or, or ACT.org. So it has to come directly from that testing agency to the university in order to be official. If we send it, it's not official. It needs to come directly from that testing agency. Um, you can send up to four free score reports for the test. And when you apply and register for the test, you, you're, you're given that for free. You can send it up to four school, schools. I would encourage you to do so, even if it's a school you might not want to do, um, but you think you might apply, send it anyway, just so they get it for free. Because if you have to go back afterwards and send your score, believe it's $13 per school per test report or score report. So it's important to use those free ones and, um, and get those out there. Okay. So there's some confusion. Most of the time there's some confusion about what the decision deadlines are, right? So there's, there's three different types of admissions. There is early decision, there's early action, and then there's rolling admissions. So early decision and early action are two where you where you um, uh, you apply and you apply early and you apply by November one and that's usually the deadline. The difference between early decision and early action is is early decision is a binding agreement. You are saying to that school if you apply early decision that you are going to uh, if if granted admission and, get, and, and you gain admission to that university, you're going to withdraw your applications at all your other schools and you're going to commit to attending their school. It's kind of an agreement that they have with the other institutions. And um, it's really important that you, you know that before you do the early decision. So we kind of don't want you to do early decision unless you're 100 um, percent willing to do that and you've got your mind made up and that's the only place you're going to go um, and you feel like you're confident you're going to get in. Um, otherwise, do early action. Early action, you comply to more than one school. And if you're accepted, you can accept right away or you can wait till spring. You can wait till May to decide. But you'll get your decision early, usually by Christmas if you apply by November 1st. And that is the early action deadline. Rolling admissions means the college will consider your application as soon as it's received, as all the required information is received, including your transcript, including your um, letters of recommendation, including your application and your payment. OK, so once they receive all the information, they'll start processing it and then it's an, on a rolling admissions basis and they'll get those decisions out to you. OK, um, and I say this down in below, a general rule of thumb is to complete your applications early. Even if you're not applying to early action or early decision, you should probably get your applications completed by November 1st. It's an important thing to get it in early. Take some stress off of you as you get into the stressful part of senior year toward graduation. Um, and really the only decision you'll have to make in the second semester is where you want to go, which is a good thing. So I think it's important that you um, take advantage of that. And I think it's important that you do that by November 1st, even if you're just applying to a school that has rolling admissions and doesn't have a deadline. Still get it done. OK, this is a super duper important part of this process. Every senior, by the time you get to senior year, you're going to have to register at parchment.com, www.parchment.com. And that is the e-transcript delivery service that we and all the schools in the state of Michigan use to submit student transcripts. There is an e-transcript initiative years ago promoting the use of the e-transcripts and the delivery of e-transcripts to the schools and uh, to the institutions. So it's important that you register with parchment because this is the only way that you send your transcript to the colleges. If you don't send, if you don't register with parchment and you apply to the school, but you never send your transcript, they're never going to review your application because you haven't completed the process. So visit parchment.com. Juniors, junior parents, junior students, please log on over the summer. We planned on doing this 
um, before you left for the year, but we can't in person. Um, so we'd like you to start this process over the summer. Make sure that you complete parchment.com, fill out your grad year information, fill out your school information, um, create an account, and then we will load when we get back in the fall, we will load all your transcripts onto parchment and we will have them ready to go. So when you apply to the school, we can send them out immediately. Another important thing is once you start receiving acceptance letters and your financial aid offers from the schools, we want you to bring your copy of those acceptance letters and scholarship award letters to the De La Salle Counseling Department. We track this data. We want to see enrollment trends. We want to give good advice to our students and we want to figure out what schools are giving our students good money. Um, so it's important that we get this data. We haven't had good turnout. We haven't had good response from parents in the in the past. Uh, two years, but we really need your, 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 you know, this information. It's important. Um, we keep it private. We don't share it with anybody. And, um, and, and it's simply just to figure out trends and, and where we can, you know, where we can best um, advise our students. When you finally pick a school, that third bullet point down, when you finally pick a school, you have to ad accept or reject their offer of admission and, and notify them that you're going to be enrolling by May 1. May 1 is kind of the national enrollment or uh, acceptance deadline and you need to commit to the school, meaning you have to pay your, your housing deposit, your enrollment deposit, and you need to commit to that school by May 1 of your of your 12th grade year, your senior year for the for enrollment next fall. And and again, that includes your, your enrollment deposit and your housing information and all your documentation that's required uh, to, to be enrolled. And the most important thing um, is before you leave and walk across that stage in May, you need to request your final transcript to that college, that one college that you plan on attending next year, next fall of after after senior year. You need to put a request in through parchment for your final transcript to be delivered to that school. And you can do that in, in April or May before you, you. I would say May 1 would be a great day to put that request in. Go to parchment. Put in a request for that school and make sure that that school that we know, because when, when the transcripts are ready in June of, of uh, your senior year, you'll already be gone and out of the building as a senior. And we want to make sure that we have all the information correct so we can submit that report. We could submit that transcript to the college um, on your behalf. So if you don't put it in before you leave. It's kind of tough for us to get a hold of you and figure out where to send it. If we don't get a request in through parchment, we don't send it. And you know what that does? That delays your admissions and the colleges um, won't let you enroll and actually start classes until they receive that final transcript from the school. So it is all your responsibility to put that request in. We will process it. We will make sure it gets there, but you have to request it and we have to know what school you're applying to. OK. So here's a quick 12th grade recap this because this is the ultimate important year. Um, they're all important, but this is the one where all the all the stuff happens. So as soon as we return in the fall our, for our, our upcoming seniors, you want to apply to the colleges you're interested in. Uh, April or August 1 is when the applications go live for the following year. So as early as mid-August, you can apply. We won't be able to send your transcripts till after Labor Day, but you can apply and we'll get that in. Use parchment. Step two, use parchment to send your official transcript to the colleges which you've applied. So register on parchment, do all the work, uh, put in your grad year, put in your first year of enrollment. And then step three, you're gonna wanna send your official ACT and or SAT scores directly to the college, okay? And I put a little note down there about COVID. COVID has thrown a wrench in the testing for this spring and summer. Uh, they've canceled all the testing sites. They've canceled all the test sessions. Maybe they will have the June one, but we're not 100% sure yet. They're still waiting on the data and they're still waiting on the, the kind of the word from the federal government and states uh, whether or not they're going to be opening up again in June or by June. So um, they're putting more weight on the high school GPA and they're going test optional this year. So that might help you. Uh, it might be a good thing that you don't have to put all your uh, put all that weight in uh, in one test, but um, you, you're still going to want to be prepared. And um, many of you have taken the ACT or SAT already, which is good. Um, you just provide that information. If they're test optional and you don't think it's a good score, then you're not necessarily required to submit it. So pay attention. Visit the website of the universities. 
and check out what they're what they're saying. And every admissions page is updating their pages to say what their admissions criteria is for next year. And they've got all the disclaimers about the COVID-19 and and, uh, and how it kind of screwed up all the testing. So they're they are aware and they're looking into it as well. OK. Another thing you need to do is get those decisions and scholarship letters to your counselor as soon as you get them next year um, for our for our soon to be seniors and make a decision by May 1st, uh, the national deadline. And then a super duper important one, please, before you walk across that stage in May, you've got to submit your final transcript request to the school you're attending. And you need to do that using parchment.com. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, I know this was brief, but we wanted to be short because of your attention spans. Everybody's attention spans are short. We don't want to be talking at you for an hour. So um, you can reach me if you're A through L, you just email me, John Hickey, um, or Tony Albany if you're M through Z at the email addresses listed below. And uh, we're also going to attach a snapshot of uh, documents and websites to this email. We're also going to provide a checklist, a to-do checklist for 10th, 11th, and 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade of things you should be doing in pre preparation for college. And I um, want to make sure you get that information in your hands so you can start discussing that with your students. Okay. Thanks so much and have, thanks so much and have a great spring and we'll talk to you soon.